Um, I was born in the Caribbean, in, in Grenada. Came over to the UK, came to Manchester. Um, I worked for the post office. I spent years on the counter and while doing that, I then established a career as a DJ. As well as doing the, the day job, I did um, nightclubs all over Manchester. Whichever clubs I worked at was full of people on the nights I was there. It was absolutely sensational. Not many people were playing the music that I played, and that was one of the main reasons. Um, and I was doing this all over Manchester, all over the North, and I wanted to be on the radio. Independent Radio came along, which was Piccadilly Radio in this area. Applied for a job, didn't get one when they opened in 74. Then one day I'm working at the post office in Didsbury and I open the Daily Mail and it said, Peebles goes to Radio 1. Now Andy Peebles presented the Soul Show on Piccadilly. And within 45 minutes, I was down at Piccadilly Radio's reception saying, look, I'm the person for this job. I'm the only person who could do this job. A few days later, I got a letter from Piccadilly saying, come in for an interview. We're walking into his office and he says, when do you want to start? This Sunday, okay? I said, yeah. That was it. On that Sunday, I presented my first show and that's 48 hours, my first show on Piccadilly. There's a great statement from some child in the States, whether or not it's true, I don't know. And they asked her why she preferred radio. And she says, because the pictures are much brighter. And it's true because it is your imagination. With me, the reason I got into, into radio was because I loved a specific type of music and had a great time with that music, still play that music now, all these decades later on. I saw the system on, online somewhere, it was advertised probably on one of my pages because there's an interest in, in radio from what I write. And I thought, yeah, you know, 30 something pound a month. I thought I can afford that. So I picked out my favorite hundred tunes. Within an hour, I was on the air and it was fabulous because I got a guy, a very good friend of mine to voice the jingles. I knew exactly what I wanted to say. I knew the music I wanted to play. Pick out your favorite songs, old and new, mix them up. If you can get the flow of, of music across the day, that kind of nice up, down, etc., etc., you'll have a great radio station. So as I said, if you can find that thing which touches people, the world's your oyster. I remember being at a radio conference many, many years ago. I used to attend these conferences. I was a pain in the butt to these guys because I wanted to establish a black music station in England. And I was at a, one of these conferences and I said, in the future, everybody's gonna be a broadcaster. Within about 20 years, I would say, or 25 years, it has happened. And anybody who wants to broadcast now can do it for next to nothing. Man, if you saw some of the figures for setting up a radio station back in the day, it'd blow you away. Nowadays, you can broadcast from your back bedroom if you want to. And that's what I say, everybody can now be a broadcaster. I still think there is a problem in that, what do you broadcast? I would say, if you have a love of something, make that your, your story and just get on the air and tell people about it. So when I ran uh, the new Sunset Radio, which was on wave streaming, um, which I enjoyed immensely, I have to tell you, um, never used any records. I picked out the tracks that I wanted, Bobby Womack and whatever, put it into the system, put it into the playlist, press play, and off you go. And the thought of doing something like that back in, 78 when i went into the studio with two boxes of albums one full of albums the other one full of 12 inches weighing a ton it's just phenomenal what's happened to the to the industry now a mistake that an awful lot of people make is to uh welcome people to the station you must listen to this you must listen to this and then give them stuff that they do not like you know what happens? They switch off. If people come to your station, you have to make sure that it's the people coming 
it's what they want. And if they do, they go to work tomorrow and they tell their friends and that's how it spreads all over the place. So the first thing you have to do is look at the management structure and the leadership, etc. So that can be good in the BBC, that can be good in independent radio. Once you assume that both of those are fine, it's down to what the stations do. Now I love BBC radio because we still do an awful lot of speech. I present the Sunday Breakfast program and on that we cover every type of story because every type of story has a religious element and nobody will tell me different. And when you see some of the things that's going on in the world at the moment, some of the shocking things that's going on in the world, like in the, in the Middle East, you know, we have to sit and we have to talk about that and we have to reflect it. Independent radio, I think, has rather got away from that. There are independent stations like LBC in London and some others who do news and they do a great job, but the general money-making radio stations just want to play music just want to have a laugh at breakfast and that's it. And I wish them all the best. It's not the way I wanted to run radio. I wanted radio that spoke to people who wanted what we were, what we were doing. Go and ask the people who aren't listening to radio, their radio station, why do you not listen to your radio station? And I think if you, if you ask those questions, ask the right questions, you may get the wrong answer. But over time, you can move towards where you want to get to. If you're passionate about something and you can sell it with that enthusiasm and you can make that go from your bedroom across the internet into people's homes and into their ears, then they will love you and they will take what you're doing and they'll believe in it. So you have to make sure you get it right, stick to what you believe in, don't believe the hype, right? Don't believe it's all what Radio 1 does. It isn't. If you like Polish folk music and you know that there are people out there who like Polish folk music, do Polish folk music the best it can be done. And you know what? You'll get people listening to your radio station. Whatever it is, there are tons of, tons of different genres. Some of them which are not very well covered at the moment and they may just be waiting for your ideas. Back then, it was nigh on impossible and it took years and keeping on badgering people to get into radio. Now, you can wake up tomorrow morning, decide you want to launch a radio station and by six o'clock tomorrow evening, you could be on the air.